cloud gaming has always been sort of a sore spot in the PC gaming community. A lot of people think it could potentially be the future of gaming, as offloading heavy graphics, rendering off-site, offers a lot of benefits to the end user. But the obvious downside is that you aren't getting the best 100% fidelity, perfect graphics, of course. And if you have a poor Wi-Fi connection, this can be made even worse. But I'm a big believer in game streaming. I played through most of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth streaming from my PlayStation 5 to my Steam Deck, and it was a pretty awesome experience. I also played the game High on Life in its entirety over cloud on PC Game Pass, and it was also very enjoyable. There are a ton of cloud gaming providers to choose from, but Nvidia recently came out and made installing their GeForce Now Cloud app much easier on the Steam Deck. It's always worked, but it was kind of backdoor and janky, and now they are fully on board and they support it. But is using a cloud service even worth it on your Steam Deck? Is the loss of graphical fidelity and consistency worth some of the pros of cloud gaming? Well, let's test it out and see the pros and cons right after this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck or any other PC for that matter, you're going to need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way. Thanks to SCD Key. Now, I'm very optimistic about cloud gaming. Generally speaking, it should help your Steam Deck battery last longer, run quieter and cooler, and save you from having to install any games ever. So basically, unlimited storage space. But of course, your quality will only be as good as your Wi-Fi connection, and you have to pay a monthly fee to the cloud provider of your choice. Now, you can always stream directly from your own PC or PlayStation free of charge, but for today, I'm mostly going to be focusing on NVIDIA GeForce Now. But do know that there are workarounds to use the other streaming platforms as well, such as PC Game Pass. But first, let's get installed. So previously to install GeForce Now, you had to install Chrome, then open GeForce Now in a browser, add it to Steam, and mess with controls and stuff. But now NVIDIA says they will do all that for you. So we just need to go to the desktop mode, enter the browser, and go to this link. And hit Get Started on Steam Deck, and run the file. Now this is basically a script that does all of that for you already. So it's cool to finally get some recognition and help from the company, but I'd still much rather prefer native support in some capacity. It will automatically reboot your Steam Deck into gaming mode, and we can see in the non-Steam section, we now have a link to GeForce Now. And then you just need to link your account, which I recommend you do on your phone, by the way. Don't use the Steam Deck, and we're good to go. Now, one perk of playing on cloud is that you don't have to wait for games to finish downloading. Since it's already on their servers, you can just pick a game and immediately start playing. So let's try Cyberpunk 2077 first. Now, getting into the game was relatively painless, but I did have to reboot once because I got stuck on this loading screen that clearly wanted me to press spacebar to enter. It's as if I wasn't recognizing that I was on a Steam Deck and none of my buttons were working. But after rebooting, I was able to finally get in. Now, this is looking amazing. I'm running the game at the Steam Deck's native resolution of 1280 by 800 at around 60 FPS, which is twice as much as you'd get by running it just off the Steam Deck without the help of the cloud. And if I'm being honest, if you didn't tell me it was cloud, I don't think I would notice. The textures look good, the latency is just as responsive, and everything's working just fine. Now it should be noted that I am testing this on the second floor of my house, and my Wi-Fi router is on the first floor. And it's nothing fancy, it's just the standard one our ISP gave me but I do have gigabit internet, so your quality is going to really matter depending on your Wi-Fi strength and the speed of your connection. But Nvidia says that the requirements for streaming to a Steam Deck like resolution are only 15 megabytes per second, which I feel like is totally doable for most people watching this video. And even if you wanted to use their service on your computer and stream 4K resolution at 120 FPS, they still only require 45 Mbps. Now again, speed isn't everything, if your Wi-Fi connection sucks, then the quality is going to suck too. But even on my box standard ISP modem, router, access point combo thing, I'm doing just fine on Cyberpunk. And if you look at the stats on the left, this thing is basically doing nothing to our hardware. The fan speed is 0 RPM most of the time, GPU and CPU are basically idling at this point, and our temperatures are amazing. Utilizing the cloud, we're able to not tax our hardware at all, which in turn might make it last longer, and ultimately will make my battery last longer. 
I can imagine playing this way would probably double the battery length as well. I think one thing people are worried about is latency issues, so I booted up the finals, which is a competitive online shooter to see how well I'm able to do or to see if I feel any kind of input lag at all. And if I'm being totally honest, because I am aware I'm playing on a cloud device, I do feel like there is a tiny amount of input lag, but not much. I'd say it's so small that it's almost unrecognizable, but I play this game on my desktop all the time and I know what it's supposed to feel like day to day. So there is maybe a couple milliseconds or something, but if you are that sweaty about your performance in an online game, you probably aren't playing on your Steam Deck anyway. By the way, all of these deaths aren't because of the lag, it's, it's because I've never played this game with a controller and I was really struggling. But if you usually play this game with a controller, I think you could have a great time with it. Now another perk of using a cloud provider on your Steam Deck is that you are not forced to do any of the Steam Deck's Linux workarounds. You don't have to worry about anti-cheat or any of that kind of stuff. Since you are playing directly off of a Windows PC, you can play any game that is in their catalog without any issue. No janky workarounds or backdooring, you just boot it up and get to gaming. Speaking of jank, now's where the real issues came in. I wanted to try Baldur's Gate 3 on it, and I just kept getting stuck in this launch page. It would open up a bunch of Steam menus like a chat windows, the EULA, and a bunch of other stuff. And I'm sure it wants me to accept the EULA or say which DirectX I want to use, but the trackpad and keys do nothing at this point. Nothing I could do would allow me to click any of the buttons. I could move the trackpad around, but it ultimately did nothing. I experienced this kind of error in a couple of games where it made it very apparent that this is software designed for a desktop PC that was being jankified for a handheld experience. I would sometimes be able to hit accept and it would say the game was running, but there's no way for me to see it or access it. I don't know if it was running in another tab on the cloud PC or what, but this kept happening on several games and it got really annoying. I finally got fed up and I wanted to see if I could bypass all the errors by plugging in a mouse and keyboard. And sure enough, it did work. Once I claimed ownership of the mouse again, I was able to accept EULAs and change settings when booting up games for the first time. So at least we know this would make for a great docked Steam Deck setup as well, since the games themselves will work if I want to play on the couch or something. But if I have to plug in a mouse and keyboard into it anytime I want to play a cloud game, that would put a real hamper on the couch co-op experience. The error didn't happen on every game, I don't blame GeForce Now directly for it, it's obviously a problem with how it's integrating with Steam, but it's something I thought you guys should know that you might experience. Even though this is an official script from NVIDIA, uh, it's still a jank workaround in the end and should be treated as such. But hey, when it works, it works, and it's really cool. It ran Baldur's Gate 3 at twice the frame rate the Steam Deck could, and it didn't become boiling hot in my hand, and the fan wasn't ramped up to 100% the entire time it's barely taxing the Steam Deck at all without any real quality drawbacks at all. So the games look great, they, they really do. But let's talk about the price real quick. Nvidia does offer a free tier of cloud streaming, but it seems to be mostly to test your network connections. It provides you access to what they call a basic rig, is ad supported and cuts you off after only an hour. So I'd say this is mostly to see what the experience would be like and not a real way to play. So their real memberships are between $10 and $20 a month and offer up different performances depending on if you're only playing on your Steam Deck or if you're also playing on like a Mac or a PC as well. Now the big difference between GeForce Now and Game Pass is that you have to already own the games you want to play on GeForce Now, whereas Game Pass lets you play the games in their catalog as long as you keep the subscription active. There's a lot of value there if you don't already have a large library of games and are just looking for something to play. But of course, you can play free-to-play games like the Finals or Fortnite or whatever free of charge on GeForce Now as well. So at the end of the day, is cloud gaming on the Steam Deck worth it? Well, I certainly get it. It has its pros and cons, and as long as you have a steady Wi-Fi connection, it could be a really good experience. Especially if you want to play really demanding games that would just not play well on the Steam Deck otherwise. Titles like Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate. But it's certainly not for everyone, and they have to work out all of the kinks with the Steam Deck version. That was all a nightmare. But as an average consumer, I'm happy to have as many options for as many gamers at as many price ranges as we can. That allows the maximum amount of people in the world to be able to enjoy games however they can. And I think that's really awesome. But what about you? Have you tried cloud gaming yet? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And please give the video a thumbs up to help boost it in the algorithm. 
If you want to know what are the best Steam Deck accessories that you should buy and a few that maybe you shouldn't, check out this video here where I go over literally every single one. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.